So now it's time to do more finance. And this time, let's do something actually useful. I like this IQ bank loan. You got my interest. That's actually cute. All right, we have something called amortization. And that's when you repay a debt over time by making regular payments. So this could be like taking out a bank loan, maybe for a car, for some money you need. It could be a mortgage, which is just a house loan. So it's a loan you make for a house, you know, from a bank. So here's a practical example. And the only difference is we're going to be playing with payment amounts. Okay, so if you don't know how to do this, look at my other videos when I show you actually how to do the finance stuff. But here I'm going to show you just with the um, TI Inspires um, Finance Solver. You can also use TI84's um, TVM Solver. You can use whatever. Uh, so amortization. I borrow $200,000, let us say, from the bank. Maybe I need to buy a house or I don't know what I might need. So let's just say I borrow this much. That's a lot of money. So they charge an annual interest rate of 7% and it's compounded monthly. That's going to be important, right? What will be my monthly payments if I want to pay it off in 30 years? Uh, the reason I keep using 7% because that's what a lot of banks uh, you know, charge, at least for some loans. House loans, it's usually lower, but it depends where you are. But it's very often like a 30-year loan. And the question is, like, how much will I have paid in total? That might be interesting. So let's start by um, just getting out our solver and let's see if we can figure out what each of these values is. This one right here, I need to figure out all these different values here. So this right here is the number of payments. Well, how many payments will I be making? Well, it's 30 years times compounded monthly. Remember, so that's going to be 12. So that's going to be times 12. Well, 30 times 12 is 360. So there we go. How about I? The interest rate as a percent is 7. Present value, uh, well, it's worth, well, you can you can set it like this. You can say 200,000 is the amount now that I'm owing. You see, and then I can work out that I want the future value to be zero. Does that make sense? Like I start off with 20, 200,000 and I want it to be zero later. Uh, we'll leave the payments in a second. I'm actually trying to solve for that. So I'll actually, you know, just put a square around it. Payments per year. Well, I'm making monthly payments, so it's 12, and luckily it's compounded monthly, so that's also 12. All I gotta do is open up my calculator and put in all this stuff. So where I go, I'm gonna add myself a calculator, go to menu, finance, and then do finance solver. I'll just put in all these values here. What was it? It was uh, 360, seven, and 200,000. So 360, tab, seven, I put in 200,000. I'm going to skip the payments for right now. I'm going to make this 0. I'll make this 12 for the payments per year, 12 for the compounds per year. So I go now to payment. And do you remember what I do? I press Enter on that, and that tells me how much I have to pay. It's a minus just because I'm making payments, no problem. Remember, don't worry about minuses. Um, and if ever, you know, you've got some errors or something, to just make one of the values minus for the payment or the uh, present or future value. It's a good little tip. So it's at 1330.60. I, mean, I guess you could say it rounds up, but we'll just say 1330.60. Okay, 1330. I'll just try to write a little bit nicer here. So 1330.60. That is the amount of money I'm making each month. So the question is then, you know, how much will I have paid in total after the 30 years? All I gotta do then, if it makes any sense, I just have to take my one three three zero. That's my monthly payments. Remember, this is this amount for every month. Well, I just gotta multiply that by the number of months that there are. Well, it's gonna be thirty years. Remember, I'm making uh, twelve months uh, for one year. So, good news. What this is going to do is going to cancel out. I don't know if you ever learned this trick. I learned this in chemistry, sort of canceling out units. You might think, what is he doing? Well, I'm just using 360. That's what 30 times 12 is. So if I do this like this, I just all I have to do is multiply this answer times my number of payments, really. So I'm just going to take my 1330.60. I'm going to multiply it by 30 times 12. I mean, I could have just done it by 360 because that's the answer. I just want to show you. So this is how much I've paid. So it's a uh, 479.016. Okay, so 479.016. So just think about this. I mean, this is actually kind of crazy, right? Think about this. You want to borrow 200000 
and you end up paying 479,000. In other words, the bank you know how much do they get? Now you could really say like, well, you know, 279 minus the 200 that you borrow. It's like they get 279,000 from you. I mean, that's sort of how much you quote unquote overpay. But it's also because you don't happen to have 200,000 in your pocket. So, you know, you might think, oh, I just have to pay 7% more. No, 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 no. That's calculated every month you're paying that. So keep in mind, and this is really how it works. Isn't that kind of crazy? So yeah, that would be a pretty big bank loan. Luckily, my wife and I, for example, at our bank, this is in Denmark, of course, keep in mind. Uh, but in Denmark, when we got our uh, bank loan, it was, it's like, it's like, it's less than 1%. So it's like, it's like, I don't know, let's say, let's say it's, let's say it's around, yeah, let's say it's around half a percent, for example. It's actually a little bit less than that. So keep in mind, in real life, you know, you hopefully can get a better bank loan than 7% because that's pretty high for a house. Let's do another example. I like this one. I got this much in my account. <laughs> Can you loan me a lot of money? So let's do an annuity. An annuity is when you grow your money over time with regular payments. So this could be your investing. For example, you invest in an index fund or there's all sorts of things you can do. So let's say I invest money in a fund. It appreciates. Remember that goes it goes up in value. A nominal interest rate of, I said nominal, I meant to say, 7.1% uh, compounded quarterly. Watch out. This one here is quarterly. That's going to be four times per year. I start with 30,000 and I'm making monthly payments of 650 each month. How much will I have at the end of 20 years? So again, although it sounds really complicated, this is like real life math stuff. Okay. So, you know, I'm not going to do a little uh, part when I say, how is this useful? I would say this is extremely useful. So let's keep going though. So the number of uh, payments, uh, how many payments am I making here? Remember, it's not number of years, it's number of payments. So I'm making 12 years. And I'm still making payments every month. So uh, 20, I meant to say. So 20 years times 12 payments. All right, so 20 times 12. Well, it's like 2 times 12, which is 24, and then add a 0. So it's 240 months that I'm making you know, payments. I'm making 240 payments in total. This is 7.1%. Now let's think carefully. What do we do about the present value? Well, that's what I start with. So that's actually good news. That's actually nice and easy. It's just I start with thirty thousand, and my payments. What are those? Those are six fifty. So that's kind of nice. I'm making those each month. Future value. That's actually what I want, right? That's I'm looking for future value here. So I'm going to put that one as the one I'm going to solve for. My payments per year. We have to be very careful here. Now they're monthly payments. That's going to be twelve, but my compounding periods per year is four. Watch out for that one. I think that's a place where you might make a mistake there. It was compounded quarterly, just for fun. So away I go. I just get out my good old finance solver. We just use your calculator for this. I was going to put in all the values. So it's 247.1. So I'll do that, 240. I put 7.1 here. I put in 30,000. Here I put in 650. I don't know my future value. Payments per year is 12, but compounding is not 12. This time it's 4. That was it. Remember I said, if you don't know what to do, make them the same. But here we do know they're different. So there we go. And I just go back. So I'm going to be solving for future value. So I'm going to put my cursor on future value. I'll press enter. You notice then it's going to be uh, 463590.88, uh, let's see. So something like that. So 463590. 463590.88. If I really want to be specific, right? So there we go. That is how much I will have at the end of the 20 years. Isn't that actually kind of great? So think about that. Um, if you actually just made monthly payments of 650 yeah, each month, you started with $30,000. Let's just assume you had some you know, extra money laying around in your pocket or something. I don't know. Maybe you have an investment you already made. Who knows? But just keep in mind what you have. This is amazing, isn't it? So that's how you can actually grow your money really nicely. Now, how much money did you actually pay in total? Keep in mind, what, what does this mean? I mean, like, you know, how much have I actually paid? Well, I've paid $30,000, but I've also paid my 240 payments of 650. I'm just, uh, this is actually maybe an interesting thing to look at because we can look at and say, well, okay, my 30,000 plus, and I'll put in a bracket here, so 240 payments times 650. 
I've actually paid 186,000, right? So I've actually paid 186,000, but you know, it's worth 463,000, which means, you know, you earned, you know, the difference. So isn't it actually kind of amazing? So you can say, you know, uh, so 463, 590, I mean, we, let's just uh, forget the decimal points, right? But let's just say, so this right here, minus 186,000. Look at that, you made 277,000. So, you know, you earned, you earned like 277,000. So this is why uh, compounding interest, I mean, it can be good, it can be bad. It all depends on which end of it you're on. See, if you're on the bank's end, you know, like before when you make a bank loan, then it's good for the bank, bad for you. Here, however, this is actually how much you earned which is awesome, right? That's like, <laughs> that's a really nice increase. So just so you know, this is how real money actually can work with compound interest.